So usually before we get into a video, I direct your attention to the link in the description for the Black Lives Matter movement. However, the Quileute tribe really needs your help at this time. They are looking to move to higher ground um, to, to preserve themselves in the event of a tsunami. There's a link in my description below. I'm also going to put the tweet right here that alerted me to this issue. Um, and then I'm going to put my donation receipt because I did spend $15 on this book and gave $15 more dollars um, to someone who for lack of a better word, bastardized the Quileute tribe um, for her own monetary gain. Match that amount um, and, and help a group of people who were actively harmed by this woman and her books. Is my setup gonna be different every time I film a video? Yes. Are you gonna complain about it? Probably. Are you gonna stop watching me? God, I hope not. Today, <laughs> we are talking about the new release from Stephanie Meyer, Midnight Sun. This review is going to be kind of weird because I already read this book just from a different point of view. So uh, rather than go through the whole book, I'm just going to do categories and I'll talk about them as I go. Um, but can we talk about the ugly ass cover of this book first? Like, it is so ugly. It is so ugly. It makes more sense once you read it because Edward in this book is obsessed with the Hades Persephone myth and, and he sees himself as Hades obviously and Bella as Persephone which is funny to me the whole time I was like don't you believe in God like why would you give so much credence to Greek mythology if you believe in God and then at the end of the book he's like I don't believe in God and it's like what what you don't since when he what I have a whole category that I'm calling T S D E M N F S as in don't even make no fucking sense. But first I want to talk about the Cullens because my favorite thing about this book was getting a lot of in-depth backstory on pretty much every single Cullen except Esme. Esme we get a lot more like interaction between her and Edward which was very sweet um, but we kind of learned a lot about each and every Cullen sibling um, and I liked that a lot like I, I you know we didn't get like what Rosalie was about until Eclipse originally so like hearing so much about her and like the really complicated relationship between her and Edward was really interesting and um Jasper is the scariest man I've ever met in my life am I still attracted to him yes what does that say about me let's not look into it so my literal least favorite thing in this entire book is the fact that um everyone in the Cullen family like the siblings called Jasper Jazz J-A-Z-Z -Z, Jazz Right off the bat, Edward is just dissing the shit out of Rosalie. He says, her mind was a stagnant pool with few surprises. She caught sight of her profile and the reflection of someone's glasses and she was mulling over her own reflection. And then if Rosalie's mind was a stagnant pool, Emmett's was lake with no shadows. <laughs> and Jasper was dot, 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 suffering. <laughs> just perfect, right off the bat. And then this part made me giggle because I'm gonna read it and then I'm gonna put the meme up. I didn't have to disappoint my father. I didn't have to cause my mother stress, worry, pain. Yes, it would hurt my adopted mother too and she was so gentle. Causing someone like Esme pain was truly inexcusable. And there's this meme that's like, it would be like, I wanna drink, suck this girl like a Capri Sun but mommy would be sad and daddy would be disappointed. <laughs> Page 60 is the first time Alice says, maybe Jazz and I could come with you. And I literally had to stop reading and be like, who the fuck is Jazz? And then I was like, they mean Jasper. That man is too scary to be called Jazz. We find out in chapter four um, that Jasper, after, after the van incident, Jasper and Rosalie both were like, we got to kill Bella because she knows too much. And Edward's like, um, excuse me, you're not going to kill her. And Jasper's like, nah, we should definitely kill her. She's going to expose us. And then Rosalie says... The girl hit her head today, so maybe that injury turns out to be more serious than it looked. Rosalie shrugged. Every mortal goes to sleep with the chance of never waking up. The others would expect us to clean up after ourselves. Technically, that would make it Edward's job, but this is obviously beyond him. You know I'm capable of control. Yes, Rosalie, we all know how proficient an assassin you are. And chapter four is called Visions, so this is the first time Alice realizes or like sees the future of, of Bella and Edward and she says I'm gonna love her someday Jazz I'll be very put out with you if you don't let her be so that's the reason Jasper doesn't kill Bella is because Alice says no because Alice runs the Collins which obviously um she says I love her too or I will it's not the same but I want to be around for that love her too I whispered she sighed you are so blind Edward can't you see where you're headed it's more inevitable than the sun rising tomorrow I don't have to follow that course 
I'll change the future. She says, you can try. And then Emmett says, oh, come on. Cause he, they're having this conversation in their heads. And Rosalie says, pay attention. Alice sees him falling for a human. How classically Edward, she made a gagging sound. Rosalie is my favorite in this book. She's the baddest bitch. We already knew that, but like this proves it. The extent of Tanya from Denali, like how into Edward she is. Um, because Edward runs all the way to Alaska after smelling Bella for the first time because he is the drama king of our generation. Um, and he was like, got a blast. Like it was a lot. Emmett is, is pure himbo energy. Like it's just, he's just a dumb, sweet bro. He's like, Edward, I don't get it, dude. But like you seem into her. So like, whatever, this is just weird to me. But like, you're my brother. It's all good. Fucking Emmett, man. So they go hunting. And Emmett's like, sorry, I know you're going through a tough spot. I really am trying not to be too much of an insensitive jerk, but since that's sort of my natural state. And then Edward doesn't laugh and he just thinks so serious all the time. What's bugging you now? And he said, and Edward says, thinking about her while worrying, really. And Emmett says, what's there to worry about? You are here, which I love. He's just, he's the best. Alice says, have fun in Port Angeles tonight. Let me know when I'm allowed to talk to Bella. Emmett says, you're pathetic. I can't believe you missed the game last night just to watch somebody sleep because in case you forgot really early on edward starts sneaking into bella's room to watch her sleep we're gonna get to it oh and we find out what happened to that guy who tried to assault bella in port angeles that edward saved her from um he took carlisle to port angeles had carlisle drug this dude and then call in an anonymous police tip because this guy turned out to be a serial rapist so like vigilante justice thank you very much i've been begging for it for three books and we got some Alice says that Rosalie will act pissed. Pissed is not a word that comes out of Alice Cullen's mouth. I'm sorry. <laughs> and we're talking to Bella at lunch and Rosalie's thinking, just tell her everything. It's not like we have rules. I love her so much. And then in chapter 14, um, Alice sees another vision and it's of Edward holding Bella's dead body in the meadow. And she's like, Edward, I love her, Edward. And he's like, don't do it. And he's like, I, I should I not take her there? And he, it's a really interesting thing that Alice explains. And it does explain why, even though Edward's like, I'm gonna kill you for a loan, I'm gonna kill you for a loan, he still wants to go because Alice explains about this knot in her visions. And one of my favorite things about this was finding out more about how Alice's visions work. Towards the end of the book, we got like a whole, like how the plan from saving Bella at the ballet studio to like the cover story of what happened to her to like everything how it worked out and we like went through all the possibilities with Alice with Edward reading Alice's mind as the visions played out it was really interesting but for the meadow the reason they end up going is because Alice says the visions are a knot and there's threads coming out of the knot and some of them extend and like that's Bella's life and some of them don't and that's Edward killing Bella and there's a million possibilities but something happens in the meadow that will undo the knot and let the threads go but it has to happen like he's she's like this is the inevitable like you go to the meadow together and something happens whether it's good or bad it happens there and that's how we continue like damn we could have had this the whole time instead of 500 pages of Edward and Bella dazzling each other Alice is the one that goes and gets Bella's truck and gives Edward the piece of stationery and a pen that he writes be safe with and he says I'll concede that you're useful and she says you couldn't survive without me god how true is that the women in this that's what really gets me too is like the women in this book in Midnight Sun Rosalie and Alice are like the like the they they make everything happen especially Alice and it's just like why didn't we know this I, I get it's from Bella's POV and she doesn't know much about them page 327 but carlisle believed i was able too gifted too strong too intelligent to fall victim to my baser desires he must have seen how i responded to his internal praises it made me arrogant i think but it also shaped me into the man i saw in his head so determined was i to earn the approval he'd already given carlisle was shrewd like that he was also very kind oh carlisle man oh my god we're gonna get to a part that literally almost made me cry i think it's next yeah it's next oh edward is with bella and he's like realizing that she's so like merciful to him and like understands what he is but like gives him grace and mercy basically and is reminded of like the first year after he turned carla like sent him out on his own and was like this is your test like go be on your own around the people and when he comes back carla 
it was Christmas time and Carlo like took a tree from the forest and like put it in their house and was like Merry Christmas and like they strung the popcorn and every oh, because he didn't want him to miss out real tears over fictional people that is the story of my life like I was reluctant to attribute any uh, any virtue to this unwelcome interloper talking about Rosalie even though I had to admit she was incredibly gifted at self-control mostly due to stubbornness and in my opinion a desire to best me which is very cute brother sister behavior but also um why do we not find out until Eclipse that Rosalie's like Carlisle level controlled like she when they when Edward um and Twilight talks about like the gifts his family has he's like Rosalie's pretty like I don't know she didn't but obviously you know that she's like so good at self-control and even if that is just like out of a desire to be the best like if she's if she went spoilers for Eclipse I guess she killed her former fiance who assaulted and murdered her and all the guys who helped she went back as a newborn vampire in her wedding dress to kill those bastards okay and did not slip did not drink a single drop of blood as a brand new vampire but she, all, all she brought to the table was that she was pretty your internalized misogyny is showing stephanie edward says sometimes emin and rose live apart from them as a married couple and he says oh how i appreciated those times i loved emmett and rosalie separately but emmett and rosalie alone together heard only by my inescapable mental reach were a grueling ordeal and that just brings up something that is so disturbing to think about um just living in a house full of people who are constantly boning or thinking about boning and you can't stop hearing it even though you tried because between your vampire hearing and your clairvoyance or whatever that's called uh tele telepathy god okay i write books that's fine um you never stop hearing about them boning or thinking about boning or remembering boning or imagining boning each other and it and two of them are your parents chapter 19 we get some real depth to Rosalie. I am sorry. I don't mean that to sound so cruel. I just can't watch her do this. She's got a chance for everything, Edward. A whole life of possibilities ahead of her and she's going to waste it all. Everything I lost, I can't bear to watch it. And we don't get this side of Rosalie until Eclipse in the original books. And that's really sad because she's so sympathetic. Like, I promise this video is not just going to be a love letter to Rosalie. But like, you can't deny the bad bitch her screen time you just can't and she got it and i have to acknowledge it i don't know what to tell you um jasper followed alice into the room unable to help himself the emotions inside were nearly intoxicating to him for there was no counterbalance to the atmosphere of bliss that jasper was getting high on now so that's really interesting and then as the danger starts to grow like with the hunter and the, and the clearing and and as things start to go jasper is like so powerful and so scary and like oh my god i love him oh my god yeah right here chapter 22 because nothing could be duller than examining this nothing male at the back of the group so unimportant and not just him because later on when he busts in to the dance studio james sees him edward sees how james saw jasper i don't i don't know how to explain that um as like this god of vengeance lit on fire because it was such like a drastic change from like the nothing male in the clearing to like this man is my and and Emmett is actually upset because Emmett pretty much had him kill like had him but James did not like surrender until he saw Jasper and he was like this is my undoing like I there's no way I'm coming back from this guy not the giant guy who's crushing me right now this scary ass blonde killing machine like and then Emmett feels some type of way about that which I love but like I was like Jasper is the coolest character <laughs> but the other reason I highlighted this was because he was using that uninteresting nothingness in the clearing to cover Alice Esme and Bella Jasper was really extending himself to protect the vulnerable members of our family but for now he encased Bella in a more clever protection than I could have imagined. Gratitude swamped me again, which is so sweet. And like Jasper really gets a bad rap. They stole a car to get from the airport to where Bella was and the police were like on their tail. So then they shove an, a soccer mom off the road. Carlisle drugs her 
and then they lay her on the ground and flip the car that they stole and take her car so then it looks like she flipped this car like damn that's cold-blooded we never talk about it again here it is jasper mangled and ferocious eyes sharp and empty at the same time looking like some forgotten god or incarnation of war projecting an aura of pure violence and the tracker had stopped trying in that fraction of a second when he saw jasper he'd surrendered to his fate all right and since half the shit that don't even make no fucking sense is about the collins let's just go ahead and do that category chapter 18 it wasn't as if i could deny rosalie's exquisiteness but it was an unnatural heightened thing sometimes more disturbing than attracting oh <laughs> still chapter 18 i don't think that that i avoided the word sex because she did will be possible for us okay um Edward is the biggest virgin in the world. So, I don't even think that he would think the word sex to himself. Oh, and this makes me heated because, oh, okay, ready? Chapter 19, how old is Carlisle? He just celebrated his 362nd birthday, or close enough. Carlisle had chosen a day for Esme's sake, but it was only his best guess. But a new moon, again you say that they don't celebrate birthdays so why does it matter when carlisle's birthday is why did esme want to know why like why why if you don't celebrate birthdays if bella's is the first birthday you celebrated since 1935 when Emmett came into the family i don't understand what's your opinion about birthdays chapter 21 in the game edward tells her to take her hair down because the most obviously human thing about her besides her scent and her heartbeat was her skin so he pulled but in the biology classroom the reason you smelled her was because or maybe this is just in the movie i don't know but her hair blew in your direction and her hair carries like a lot of her smell so i'm like i i get what you're saying but does no did she not you're wearing a raincoat because you mm, oh I'm, I'm getting mad now because when he goes to pick her up from charlie's house he's edward is wearing a raincoat with a hood because it's raining in town so take your hood oh my god take your raincoat off and put it on her well bella's scent fresh and immediate wafted directly into the stranger's faces because her hair blew in the wind maybe oh my god you're so stupid i can't handle it chapter 23 and goodbyes when bella says it didn't work out okay i really really hate forks that was the same thing my mom said when she left him you could say i was hitting below the belt i didn't think about this until this book or i would have mentioned it in twilight but how does bella know that she was like two years old when her mom left her dad chapter 24 it appeared the redhead victoria had gone to the high school in the night and through most of the public buildings in town so i am once again asking why in new moon does laurent say victoria sent him to get the lay of the land she's been all through the town through all the public roads she went to charlie's house one time so did you mean to say that she sent laurent to see who was around protecting bella is that what you meant to say then say that chapter 26 is just called blood by the way um carlisle's sewing up bella's head which i thought he was holding like a compress to her head to stop the bleeding um from bella's point of view in twilight because she obviously doesn't know he's sewing her her lacerations um he says i can't help you i have to get this bleeding stopped here if you're going to be taking blood from her hand however in chapter one or two of this book um edward mentions that he has two medical degrees and that he used to assist carlisle informally on like small things so you want me to believe that edward could not sew up a couple lacerations in her in her head while carlisle the paragon of self-control sucked the blood out of the girl i know the thematically thematically yeah thematically um that that it is really important for edward to be the one to suck the blood but like it realistically that shit don't even make no fucking sense. After this whole book, bitching about losing his soul, corrupting Bella's soul, souls and this and souls and this, there was no God that I belonged to. No one for me to supplicate. Carlisle had different ideas and maybe an exception could be made for someone like him, but I wasn't like him. So, then, so then why you feel some type of way about your soul if you don't even believe in God? This is like character assassination all of a sudden. This like sudden revelation that he doesn't actually believe in God or like think there is a God for him is just 
antithetical to like his whole thing about a soul like what is the consequence of having a soul or not having a soul or whatever happens in the afterlife if you don't believe in god like i don't understand what you're worried about then <laughs> where are you going with your soul after when, where next we're going to talk about foreshadowing that she clearly added after writing the other four books or foreshadowing that is just not subtle <laughs> just right away right away chapter one um i was the last person who would ever stand as a protector for isabella swan she would never need protection from anything more than she needed it from me i mean Mm, give it two chapters you will change your mind there was something very dot 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 engaging about jacob black's mind pure and open it reminded me of angela's i felt suddenly sorry that this particular boy was born my enemy his was the rare kind of mind that was easy to be inside restful almost i just read eclipse and this is funny to me because if you leave you will come back alice said her voice implacable no i said i can stay away i know i can you can't maybe if it was just your own pain and she raced through a flip book of futures bella's face from a thousand different angles always tinted gray sunless deep circles under her eyes her expression empty one would call it lifeless what's wrong why is she like that because you've left she's not doing well understatement of the century though i had not been the one to tell her the truth about myself bella knew things she was forbidden to know it was nothing that would ever bring her the wrong kind of attract attention unless i did something stupid like go to italy the same page. I think he's thinking about killing himself. I don't know. It was too bad the Quelyu Treaty was toothless these days. Three generations ago, all I would have had to do to kill myself was walk till a push. A useless idea now. <laughs> She's so clever, guys. Chapter 16, Bella says, I'm not a big fan of birthdays. He says, that's unusual. It's a lot of pressure, she said. Presents and stuff. What if you don't like them and you've got to get your game face on right away so you don't hurt anyone's feelings and people look at you a lot. So you're telling me that she tells you she hates birthdays and does not like attention. So she explicitly tells you this, and yet in New Moon, you guys just like do not give a single fuck about her opinions or her feelings or wants or needs or desires. And like, if she never voiced these opinions, I would be a little more forgiving. However, you guys have an explicit conversation about it. You're a jerk. Anyway, Bella says, I'm feeling like humanity is pretty overrated. Little, that is Bella's only character trait from here on out so chapter 18 <laughs> the volturi were very far away and very much absorbed in their mission to police the vampire world they would never affect bella's life beyond the lore they concocted to protect immortals privacy the lie detector determined that was a lie the tracker had no idea what he was up against bella will be safer with jasper standing guard than anyone and with alice beside him the tracker couldn't take them by surprise and i just wrote that is not correct <laughs> As awkward as her injured leg made their dance adjacent movement, she seemed more comfortable with him than any of her human friends. Perhaps his very pure open mind had that effect on people. A strange thought crossed my mind. Would that cluttered little house that he imagines Bella having be in La Push? I shook the idea away. It was just irrational jealousy. The boy didn't really irritate me. A mind that expansive would always be a welcome respite from the average humans. It was what he represented that hurt me. Someone good and kind and human. That is not correct. I have a bunch of notes about stuff that is really interesting from Edward's point of view that makes more sense, but I think this video is already super, super long, so I'm just gonna get to the cringe writing because that's what you guys are here for. This is cringe writing slash not like other girls syndrome that Stephanie Meyer clearly has, and it's only exacerbated by the fact that she is the Bella Swan insert, and now she's thinking of herself from a man's point of view, and like, do you know what I mean? Like, wow it's like way worse from edward's point of view than it was from bella's but let's go somehow bella looked more fragile than her new classmates her skin was so translucent it was hard to believe it offered her much defense from the outside world so she's already just like the most delicate little thing oh, this right here i headed off for my junior level biology lesson it was doubtful mr banner would manage to pull anything in his lecture that would surprise someone holding two medical degrees yet he couldn't sew up bella's head lacerations while well, carlisle sucked the blood out of her hand it's fine Chapter two, she was actually sort of pretty for a human in an unusual way. Better than being beautiful, her face was dot dot dot, unexpected. Literally, shut up. Why did it have to be this girl who would see too much because she's not like other girls? Three pages later, there was just no making sense of this girl. She wasn't like other humans. Chapter 50, unlike most humans, her needs were far down the list. She was selfless. Same page, she wasn't the average martyr. She didn't want an audience for her pain. To look away first was a mistake only an incompetent liar would make and I was not an incompetent liar except 
Nothing could be worse than the truth. I was an undead nightmare straight from the pages of a horror novel. And he tells Emmett to bite him. He says, bite me. Like, we get it, guys. I, I that is like, I, I, my vampire fiction pet peeve. Just stop it with that. That is so corny. Chapter 15, he says, it had rankled knowing that I would hurt the girl. I don't know what rankled means. And Stephanie put the fucking thesaurus away. I'm begging you for all of our sakes. That would be the best thing for everyone is just for you to use normal words and just stop it with the weird words. Chapter five, and this is how Edward convinces himself to start watching Bella sleep. What if something happened to her in the night? What if I went to school tomorrow, every sense and feeling focused on the space where she should be and her seat was empty. Abruptly, the risk felt unacceptable. The only way I could be positive she was safe was if there was someone in place to catch the meteorite before it could touch her. The jittery high swept through me again when I realized that I was going to find the girl. Next page, but not every danger would streak across the sky with a brilliant splash of fire. I could think of many that would give no warning. Hazards that could slink into the dark house silently that might already be there. Ridiculous, I knew that. I knew I was being irrational, but I felt anxious. I couldn't push the dark imaginings from my mind. If I could just see her, dot, 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 I would take a closer look. I was repulsed by myself as I watched her toss. How was I any better than some sick peeping Tom? I wasn't, I was much, much worse. You, know, you ain't never lied, Edward. So long I tried to hear her thoughts and fail. The lure of those unprotected, unconsciously spoken thoughts was impossibly tempting. What were human roles to me after all? How many did I ignore on a daily basis? None, none. You guys try really fucking hard to be human and you do all the human things that you can. So what are you talking about? Oh, dude, this is when he like falls in love with her while he's watching her sleep and she doesn't know it. It's fine. My life was an unending, unchanging midnight. It must by necessity always be midnight for me. So how was it possible that the sun was rising now in the middle of my midnight? Chapter six, I inhaled deeply through my nose, feel the burn. Shut up. I, I smiled. Well, we can try, I suppose, but I'm warning you now that I'm not a good friend for you. I waited for her response, torn in two, wishing she would finally hear and understand, thinking I might die if she did. And he says, how melodramatic and i was like thank you for acknowledging this emo ed boy like you are the most emo when he says what if i'm the bad guy she's like i see and he says do you and she says you're dangerous i couldn't answer her was this my last moment with her would she run now could i be allowed to tell her that i loved her before she left or would that frighten her more i don't know what do you think see you later then i said trying for casual again please save yourself please never leave me Bella never wore makeup, nor should she. The cosmetics industry made billions of dollars a year from women who were trying to attain skin like hers. Shut up. I didn't know how to do this, how to court her as a normal human modern man in the year 2005. But it's funny because she spells out 2005. And also 2005. <laughs> So it's a sunny day and he's like, I hovered invisible in the shadows where I could follow the object of my love and obsession. This is chapter eight, by the way. I would watch her just in case. After all, there were always other kind, others of my kind out there. Knowing I would return while she was asleep, ignoring every ethical and moral argument against my behavior. But I certainly would not trespass on her privacy the way a peeping Tom would have. I was here for her protection, not to leer at her in the way Mike Newton no doubt would. I would not treat her so crassly what do you think you're doing? What do you, what do you think, what? Uh. After nine, he says, but I didn't know how else to look for Bella with an exclamation point. And I just, I laughed. Chapter nine, um, he's talking about the guy who tried to assault Bella. I still knew precisely where to find him. His black thoughts sucked at the night sky pulling me toward them. I don't know if that's correct. Chapter 10, he, t he, he tells her everything and she's like, it doesn't matter. And he's like, is she mentally stable? I suppose that I could arrange for her to find the best care available. Carlisle would have the connections to find her the most skilled doctors and talented therapists. Perhaps something could be done to fix whatever it was that was wrong with her. Whatever made her content to sit beside a vampire. <laughs> I would watch over the facility and visit as often as she allowed. I'll see you tomorrow, I said, knowing that I would see her much sooner than that. She wouldn't see me until tomorrow, though. Gross. Gross. She sat there motionless for a moment, eyes wide and stunned. Dazzled, I guessed. As was I. <laughs> Whatever force it was that wanted to- I'm sorry. <laughs> the reason I hate the dazzling thing so much is because 
I just think of the song Razzle Dazzle from Chicago. <laughs> I just, every time I hear the word dazzle, I just go, give them the old Razzle Dazzle. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. Whatever force it was that wanted to hurt Bella would have to go through me. No, she had no guardian angel, but I would do my best. A guardian vampire. <sighs> Chapter 11. Would Bella want to know Alice to have a vampire for a girlfriend? Knowing Bella, that idea wouldn't bother her in the slightest. What Bella wanted and what was best for Bella were two very separate things. And then this whole chapter, he is mad that she is wearing this big green sweater. He says the ridiculous sweater, the hideous sweater, too big, unflattering, sh a shapeless jumble. Jessica says, oh, swoon in her thoughts in this chapter. Like we really, we tried hard. Chapter 12, I could stroke a soap bubble without popping it as long as I was firmly in control of myself. Bella was like a soap bubble, fragile and ephemeral, temporary. You know, I've never seen a girl that I was into and been like, mm. Like, that's soap bubble. It just never happened. Oh my god. And then he calls Rosalie the beautiful ogre under the bridge. Like, it's just so weird. Can you just, like, control yourself for one second? Chapter 13, she says her favorite color is brown. He says, I realize brown was my favorite too. I couldn't imagine any shade more beautiful than her eyes. <laughs> and then we find out the CD that Bella was listening to in Twilight was Linkin Park's Hybrid Theory. <laughs> and I've never heard anything more 2005 in my life. Oh, and they're talking about her favorite books, and this was the most author self-insert shit I've ever read in my life. Listen to this. She's talking about her favorite books, and he's thinking about the books, and he's like, I could see elements of the stories in her makeup, characters that had shaped the context of her world. There was a bit of Jane Eyre in her, a portion of Scout Finch and Joe March, a measure of Eleanor Dashwood and Lucy P Pivency. I was sure I would find more connections as I learned more about her. We use the word sullen and the last name Cullen within like 10 words. And I'm sorry, just like you cannot use the adverb gracefully when your character's name is Grace, you cannot use the word sullen when your last name is Cullen. You can't. It's not allowed. I won't allow it. And then we get three pages describing her old bedroom. Not even her bedroom now. Her bedroom in Phoenix. Why? 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 Chapter 15, all I could do, it seemed, was cling to my decision with both hands. This stood out to me for two reasons. First of all, you cannot cling to an intangible thing with both hands, but I was like, I've heard that before. I'm like, I would, I would bet my next paycheck that Grace said that in Crave. I'm like pretty sure. Yep, chapter 38 of Crave, I took a deep breath and held onto it with both hands. And that, presents an interesting juxtaposition because the first couple chapters of, of Midnight Sun came out a while ago. They got leaked on the internet. Stephanie Meyer put them on her website and was like, have it. I'm never finishing this. So was this in the original leaked chapters and Tracy Wolf took it? Or did Stephanie Meyer read Crave, liked that metaphor or whatever that is, and use it. Like, who needs to sue whom in this situation? Chapter 15, what I was doing was basking, drowning, wallowing in my love for Bella. Sir, please relax. Chapter 16, um, her mouth actually fell open like a character in a kind of sitcom that had a laugh track. <sighs> Chapter 17, she uses the term puckish grin, that Bella gave a puckish grin. I don't know what that means. I'm once again asking you to put the thesaurus down. And the reason that Edward says the iconic so the lion fell in love with the lamb is because one time him and carlisle went to a quaker house and he saw a painting of a lion and a lamb laying together in a meadow the electricity ricocheted around inside my stomach and i wondered why humans had thought to name such a wild sensation butterflies well if you ask tracy wolf they are pterodactyls he calls their kiss a strange alchemy it felt as if a new sun was bursting into being where our mouths met and my whole body was filled to a shatter point with the brilliant light and then he uses the word jocularity. Don't know what it means. Besides friends don't let friends drive drunk, I concluded, quoting the Ag Council slogan, it was a dated reference for her. She'd only been three when the campaign was launched. Who asked? Who asked? Everyone knows friends don't let friends drive drunk, first of all. And second of all, it's again, you're intoxicated by my very presence. It's stupid. Also, who asked? 
not me. Her wet hair looping in long seaweed tangles and her face glowing in the moonlight. She looked more than good. The English language needed a word that meant something halfway between a goddess and a naiad. I need you to fucking relax. He calls her twisting and turning in her sleep her nightly gyrations. No, no, no. His insides were melting into liquid joy as she says he, she loves him. Um, and then when they're at, <laughs> and then when they go to the Collins house, when she cries, when he plays her lullaby and he wipes the tear and he eats it, I always thought that it was like, I can't drink her blood. So like, maybe this is as close as I'll get. No, no, no. It is because things don't pass through their body except blood. I swallowed Bella's tear. Perhaps it would never leave my body. After she, after she left me, after the lonely years had passed, maybe I would always have this piece of her inside me. That is the creepiest thing I've, I'm, wow, that is the creepiest thing I've ever heard. And then in chapter 24, when he sends Bella away with Alice and Jasper, he's having Carlisle text instructions on how to care for your human. Bella needs to eat at least three times every 24 hour period and hydration is important. She should have water on hand. Ideally eight hours of sleep. This shit was so funny to me. I can't even explain it. I can't, I, I understand that Alice and Jasper have no idea what humans need, but like the fact that he had the text and instruction manual when Bella's a fucking human that talks and walks and speaks like she can let him know she's hungry like that was so weird to me i don't know and because this video is already 8,700 days long i will just tell you that there are at least 10 references to hades persephone or pomegranate seeds in this book um overall i i am pleasantly surprised by how much i liked this book i thought it was going to be very emo it was but not as bad as i thought i thought i was going to be bored to tears hearing about how they chased james down um it it wasn't that bad i really really loved finding out more about how alice's visions worked seeing them through edward's eyes how like she runs through everything um loved the character development of rosalie really just enjoyed spending more time with the Collins in general. Um, this felt so much more realistic of how they would be than Breaking Dawn. Breaking Dawn, from what I remember, reads like bad fan fiction and this just felt very grounded and, and real. Um, again, I'm going to recommend you guys check out the link in my description to donate money to the Quail Ute tribe so they can move to higher ground. If you had the coinage to buy this book, I would highly encourage you to find the coinage to support them as they've been directly affected by this woman's writing. In the meantime, I make new videos every single Monday. I will see you next week for New Moon. Bye!